you'd see like a thousand kids just losing their minds, having like the best time to like really interesting, like exciting music. People are there for the music. done so much to change the city so much for a lot of artists that I think have now blossomed as a result they're more concerned with putting on good shows and, and like getting people to listen to good music rather than making a huge amount of money given like Sydney something to be like feel really like proud of our own identity my name is Bichara Edera Singha I'm Tom Hoggett and I'm Lee Daniel Evans and we are Astral People um, Astral People is a uh, an artist management and touring company. A lot of the time, people get us confused for a label. We are not a record label. Uh, we manage the careers of 26 artists um, from around Australia, and we also run an international touring company. I got into music from a super young age. I pretty much grew up online as a young teenager, so I was very into like. Like the West Coast rap world, <laughs> that was my thing. When I was 13, 14, 15, I'd just be talking to rappers <laughs> every day online. And I started listening to a lot of different music. Started getting into management just before I met Lee, when I was about 18 or 19. I got into music when I moved to Australia from South Africa. I discovered like a bunch of like Australian artists and then started like delving more and more into it. And John T, my brother, started playing guitar and he was making noise, so I locked him in a cupboard <laughs> and then just left him in there for a few years and then <laughs> that he came out and he happened to be really good. And I was like, if you like if this turns into into something real, like I'm gonna manage you. You know, it was just my brother and like we were just in high school. It'd be like, you know, when this starts taking off, like I'm going to manage you. And I was like, all right. And it's funny that it actually did happen. It has been the most craziest bunch of years ever. I, I still haven't processed all the stuff that's happened in the past five years. Yeah, when I finished school, I was just like, I started joining bands and then making beats. And then I sent that to a record label called Stone's Throw in LA. It's like, that was like my dream of dreams, like that you could not have like convinced me that I would have anything to do with. Like John T was the first act that I worked with and that was like my first foray into the music industry. So I met Tom on an internet forum and we always seemed to like a lot of the same stuff. And he was like, hey, there's this group collarbones, we should work together on it. I absolutely love John T. Since his first ever show, I went to that show and was like blown away from day one. So I was like, I've got to get Lee on board. And that was like where the first seeds of Astral were planted. started meeting up with Marcus a lot because Travis lives in Adelaide and he um, uh, asked me if I would manage them. I was already a huge fan of Colin. Before Astral People I was um I was actually studying a health science degree at uni. A friend of mine was like, oh, you should go check out this DJ called um, Mike Hu. So I went and checked him out one day, then some somehow convinced him to let me handle his bookings. I kept seeing these tracks by this guy called Joe Carey, and at the time he was 16, I think, online, and I was like, man, this is like right up my alley. 
we brought Vic into the mix because he was a friend of mine and he was managing Joe Carey and who was supporting Collarbones at their album launch and it all kind of kicked off from there. We just got chatting, we had a few uh, meetings at uh, Dimitri's Pizza on Crown Street. Um, spot. Yeah, that was our spot and we did that a few weeks and then, yeah, we just decided to, yeah, we can do this. Before there were there wasn't really a home for this style of music, I guess. There, there were there were different scenes at the time. Everyone had like their own little things going on. The dubstep people would stay with the dubstep people. The beats people would stay with the beats people. The house people would stay with the house people. Everything was like very much segregated. Every night was sort of genre specific or like every night was sort of tailored to a certain crowd. It's a bit restrictive and it doesn't mean that people can kind of go go into something and kind of be open-minded about it. Astral putting on these shows that like in every show was, was so different and so unique and so like special. When I started performing live and in the scene and things, it was a very different climate here in Sydney. It was mainly just like rock bands and stuff. It was just didn't seem like it was an avenue to perform electronic music, like the stuff that I was doing. Because like John, she was the first act that I worked with. He got grouped in with all these like indie bands and it wasn't really his thing. He always came up to me and was like, it's like why isn't there something like low in theory in Sydney? Something that I feel a part of. I was like, you know, you're right. Like there's a bunch of these other like young acts coming up and they've got nowhere to go, no shows to play. First experiences with the sort of um, local electronic music scene were our first shows. At the time, I suppose we weren't really like too conscious of the way the scene was set up because we were kind of new to it. I think that was, I guess, kind of the, the starting roots of what did end up becoming what the scene is now. Yeah, like people like Rainbow Chan and, 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 and like, Burn, yeah, 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 and stuff like that, they were also that. doing it. I am always quite impressed with the way that Astral are able to bring in like a live element and then DJing a producer element. They don't really discriminate between that, they, they see it as you know, this kind of seamless spectrum uh, of different iterations of electronic music. I was, it was mind-blowing to me because I remember my first kind of chats with Vic. I didn't really know where I, where I fitted into the piece. There's all these amazingly talented people who are like amazing producers, like multi-instrumentalists, singers. I was like, where do I kind of fit in? And it's like, he knew that I loved and played a whole bunch of different music but never really had the opportunity to do it. We've finally been able to bridge that gap that we've always wanted to bridge between the, the live band nights and, and the club nights, you know, we, we really made an effort on trying to do that. Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to create, just a party that we could all go to, just have, have no limits on the genres, just have all our artists there. Basically creating parties that we wanted to go to. So Rainbow, that was an interesting one. I remember watching her. She was just like, she just owned the stage like someone that I've just never seen. Like, for fuck's sake, it's like a Wednesday night at like, you know, seven o'clock at night and she's just giving it her all and it was like, I just turned around and I was like, I think we're gonna sign her. not going to sign me unless he'd seen me perform live first so I think I passed the test because as soon as I finished he like hey everyone hugged me and he just kind of like nodded and went yep yep <laughs> it's happening it's on <laughs> Vic kind of came in hard he kind of told us that like we were pretty shit <laughs> and like our songs sounded pretty rubbish but like he felt were interesting and they kind of had signed the rest of the roster that was to be the original roster at that time if we're willing to, I don't know, go in, and go in hard, like, he'll take a crack at us. 
from the first day, you can look at the first, our first few bookings. It's everything that we've loved about music over the last few years coming together as this one big project, this one uniform project. We love all different types of music and I think like most people in Sydney like that now. Everyone's taste in Sydney is becoming more versatile by the day. We've never been clicky sort of people, we're not like the coolest dudes walking around, we're not like crazy promoters or anything like that, we're just like guys that just love good music from all sorts of different genres and that's at the end of the day that's all we're going to bring to Astro people. I made a few demos and like put it up as Wave Racer and like just told my friends about it just like with the aim of getting them to like give me some feedback and um, yeah next thing I knew it was like everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, basically I met Wave Racer through Cosmos Midnight. They've just got a huge group of mates who are just ridiculously talented. Like every, I swear every few months we meet another one and it's like, holy shit, where are you guys coming from? Me and Cosmos Midnight and Basenji were all really good friends and like me and Cosmos Midnight actually share this studio space together. We, we make music together in here. Like, I also send them stuff, send them demos all the time, they send me demos all the time. We give each other critical feedback, like objective critical feedback on the stuff that we're making. Like most people on the crew are just like whoever's down with Astral are just super friendly and nice people. So I think everyone respects what each other does and has like, you know, time to listen to everyone's stuff. So it's like, yeah, family vibes, man. To me, like the, uh, the the family vibe and like the collaboration was like everything and they've like become like like my best friends and this whole family and you know still adding all these people and it's breathed a lot of life into like what I do now. I guess I think of it as less of, I don't know, a group of people managed by someone or you know this touring company that it's become and more just, yeah it's been good, it's just like exposes you to a lot of kind of like-minded people who have all become really close friends over the years, so it's nice, it's kind of like a, a weird family in a way. We're not like crazy A&R agents that are like seeking for like the next big act, we're just like, hey your music's sick, let's uh, give it a trial run, let's try and work with this, and then next step you end up managing them and it's like, yeah, it's just such a natural sort of progression. Yeah. It's never felt We're like, all friends. it's never felt like it's like, you know, it's a, it's a business thing, put it that way. It's always mm. felt very, very natural to us. And, um, and these are the people who we hang out with yeah, every exactly. weekend, every day. Like, That's they're just as much of our friends as they are our artists. Yeah. I mean, I think we'd all be lying if we said that at one stage, like, you know, we didn't think of throwing the towel in with this whole thing because it's a, it's been a fucking pain in the ass. It just saps the life out of you sometimes. But then you take something positive, like someone like Wave Racer, like suddenly just like flying up overseas and touring with Chromio or, or Jonti and Rainbow working together and, and Polygraphy on the Since I Left You project. Or like, say, like someone like Joe Carey, who, you know, has a much publicized, you know, battle with depression since he's a young, young, young days as an artist. And, and now he's gone and toured Europe and he's, he played his first, like, run of headline shows recently under the Top Sherm project and he's doing well with that. Just little things like that are what kind of keeps us going and when we reflect on it we're like, you know what, that's all been that's all been awesome and we're stoked to be a part of it. If I went back three years ago and I knew that I would have a really good like artist roster, a publishing company, a music festival, but these are things that like I never in my wildest dreams imagined of happening. Just like I had no idea what was going to happen three years ago, I have no idea what's going to happen, you know, in the next coming years. You know, I just see it putting on wilder shows and, you know, and just creating more avenues for like, you know, I guess expression for artists in, in Australia. Yeah, I think having actual, it's like a meeting point, I guess, between artists. When you go into the different shows, you see the same kind of group of people around and and I think, you know, most people are just like great humans. They're more into creating a scene than creating this pedestal that they can put themselves up on. They kind of did it for everyone. And I think that's, you know, on the grander scale, that's kind of what they've done for the scene is kind of like really cared about it and put in a shit ton of work that's made people sort of step up and naturally like everyone's kind of rising, like the standard has improved thanks to them. 
They were just super keen and hardworking and had like mad vision. There's now consistent parties that are regular and attended by people who just love Jesus. Man, I feel super lucky to be involved and um, mad humbled and a lot of respect for everyone, all those guys. Electronic music and live music in Australia. Everyone is so like excited about it and like to the point where we're more excited about the stuff coming out of Australia than we are about anywhere else in the world. And obviously as for people's position in it is a very valuable position and they're gonna to continue to like push the right stuff and help and put on the right shows and like support the right artists and that's incredibly important and I trust that they'll continue to do that. The, the ethos about Astral People is the family that we have, the artists that we have, the people that we work with, the team around us. We're all just like best mates now. Mm. And that's why it's lasted this long and that's why like our artists always give us everything when we ask them for it because they know at the end of the day we're just friends and we all got the same vision in, in common and, and that's been the great thing from day one. We respect you and they respect us and we're here to like meet some common goals together.